This is the bombing of the Tunnel neighbourhood, the deadliest attack of the 1st of August 2014. We have collected hundreds of images and videos from Rafa by witnesses who experienced the events firsthand. Three videos capture what we suspect to be the same bombing incident. We study the constantly shifting morphology of the smoke plumes and compare them. The form of the plume is unique at any given moment. Comparing the exact shape of the plume allows us to find the overlapping still frames and to synchronise the clips. We locate the cameras on the satellite photograph. We determine the line along which the camera is located by connecting identifiable structures in the image, a water tower and a football stadium. The camera is somewhere along this line. We locate and measure other structures within the image to determine the camera's perspective and the edges of the photograph's frame. We locate the other two cameras in a similar fashion. We measure the size of the smoke plume within each frame and intersect the three perspectives. The site of the strike is at the intersection of the three axes. A satellite image from after the strike confirms this location. This satellite photograph taken at exactly 11.39am on the 1st of August, offers a rare insight into the battle as it developed. The destruction of the Tanoa neighbourhood is already visible on the satellite image. To determine the precise time of the strike, we use shadow analysis. In this clip, the videographer, just before shutting off the camera, zooms out to reveal the shadow lines cast on the flat roof from two columns. We use these columns as sundials. We match the camera's orientation and lens distortion with a digital model. We simulate the sun's movement after calibrating it to the morning of the 1st of August 2014 in Rafa. The shadows overlap at 10.53 a.m. We verify this time by finding correlating events within our image complex. We look at the satellite image from the 1st of August and notice a plume of smoke from a recent explosion. We look through the image archive to find a photograph that captured this explosion. Smoke clouds are metadata. They hold information regarding both space and time. We find a sequence of photographs of the same location and showing a similar smoke plume. The metadata on these photographs is wrong. It shows that the photographs were taken shortly before midnight, which is highly unlikely. Although the metadata is incorrect, the time gaps between the photographs are consistent throughout the sequence. We recreate the rhythm of the image sequence. We measure the size of the plume as it morphs in the photographs to find the closest frame to match the plume in the satellite image. Knowing that the satellite image was taken at 11.39am, we can therefore anchor the ground images accordingly. This set of images was taken on the same camera. This we verify by identifying the same watermark on the lens. We correct the metadata according to the previous calculation. We find the Tanoa bomb plume in this sequence. 
the time matches with our shadow analysis. Using these techniques, we build a timeline of the events of the day. At 10.55, people seeking protection next to the hospital took these photographs, showing the strike on the Tunnel neighbourhood. We recognise the shape of the plume. This video of the strike shows two bombs in mid-air, fractions of a second before impact. We find the craters they generated in the satellite image. We measure the size of the craters and the impact area. Since we know the distance between the videographer and the bombs, we can locate a scaled image plane on the 3D model. We can measure this plane and determine the shape and size of the bombs. An online catalogue helps us to determine the bomb to be a US-made MK-84 packed with one tonne of explosives. The same bomb plume was recorded from several different perspectives. Close by, another video recorded by a civilian shows the result of an attack on a motorcyclist. This happened roughly 10 minutes before the bombing of the Tanua neighbourhood. At this time, Inam Uldayed bin Hamad and her children were at her brother's house on Oruba Street. They decided to flee because the shelling became more intense. Then the two bombs dropped on the Chenor neighbourhood. Inam was hit by a column of a building and lost consciousness. Sixteen people died. Her five-year-old son was among them.